So today we are going to discuss the uh, second part of the pharmacodynamic. It is the receptor, media, uh, receptor families. And hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I'm Dr. Shanaz Malik. So these are the various type of the receptor. So first is the ligand gated uh, ion channel, uh, G protein coupled receptor, transmembranous receptor, and receptor regulate gene expression. So first three are uh, membrane uh, attached. Uh, receptors and fourth one is the receptor present in the nucleus. Now ligand gated ion channel. There are two type of the receptor like first is the excitatory and another one is the inhibitory type of the receptor. So example is the nicotine uh, receptor at the acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction which is excitatory type of the uh, ion uh, receptor and which increase the whenever ion channel open it which is it increase the flow of the sodium toward the cell and increase positivity of the cell and causes depolarization occur example is the nicotinic receptor another one is the GABA amino butyric acid and glutamic acid receptor these are inhibitory type of the receptor whenever ion channel open increase the flow of the chloride toward the cell and it causes hyperpolarization of the cell. So these are the inhibit the cell. So these are the inhibitory type of the receptor. The onset of action of the drug is fastest to this receptor because it depend on the flow of the ion only. Now mechanism of ligand gated ion channel. So this is the ligand gated ion channel. It is rosette separate and uh, it has phi subunit, two alpha subunit beta gamma and delta subunit uh, whenever this uh, drug are bind to the this alpha subunit uh, receptor and uh, this channel is rosette separate uh, channel is open so increase the flow of the ion so whenever increase the flow of sodium to in the cell so increase the polar uh, increase the uh, positivity of the cell and depolarization occur and whenever increase the flow of chloride in the cell so increase the hyperpolarization so there are two type of the action uh, first is the excitatory and another one is the inhibitory whenever sodium uh, increase the increase the flow of sodium sodium in the cell so it causes depolarization occur and whenever increase the flow of the chloride causes depolarization occur so there are two type of the uh, receptor excitatory as well as inhibitory uh, nicotinic receptor are like uh, excitatory receptor and GABA receptors are inhibitory type of the receptor a second one is the G protein coupled receptor and uh, these are the receptor on the cell membrane which control the cell function via the adenylyl cyclase phospholipase C ion channels and they are coupled to intracellular effector through the G protein. G protein are membrane protein have three subunit alpha, beta and gamma with G protein bound subunit. Now G protein coupled receptor uh, the agonist that bind to the receptor are the first messenger like alpha receptor and beta receptor they are first messenger messenger first they bind to the receptor and consequently it uh, simulate the internal messenger like second messenger in result in the formation of recruitment to molecule that initiate the signaling mechanism in a cell and example of the second messengers are cyclic AMP and inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. These are the second messengers. First of all, binding of agonist to the receptor on the cell membrane. So, internal side of the cell membrane coupling of the G protein to receptor. So, GDP bound to the alpha subunit exchange to GTP. So GTP, uh, G protein coupled receptor, G protein having three subunit alpha, beta and gamma. So these three are combined subunit but whenever it bind to the GTP, it is bind, already binded to the GDP and when it dissociate alpha unit uh, dissociate from the um, beta and gamma subunit. So uh, GTP produce and alpha GTP is uh, released from the G beta and gamma subunit and bind to the target enzyme on the or ion channel and effect produced depend on the type of the G protein type like G uh, GS, 
GI and GQ which associated with agonist occupied receptor. GS and GQ are the stimulatory or excitatory type of the receptor when GI is uh, inhibitory type of the receptor. So, depend on the stimulation of this receptor, G protein coupled receptor, a response will occur. Now, we are action of the G protein coupled receptor can seen in the figure. First is the extracellular receptor of the adrenaline like beta adrenergic receptor. So, adrenaline bind with the beta adrenergic receptor extracellularly and it activate the internal cascade like it activate the G protein. So, G protein having 3 subunit alpha, beta and gamma bind with the GDP. And now this alpha subunit is released from the beta and gamma subunit and bind to the GDP. So, now uh, alpha subunit will activate adenylyl cyclase intracellularly and this adenylyl cyclase enzyme will activate phosphokinase A and now phosphokinase A enzyme will activate further uh, action of the cell. Now there are uh, various type of the G protein like uh, GS, GI and GQ. So GS and GQ are the stimulatory or excitatory type of the G protein and uh, it causes activate the adenylyl cyclase and increase cyclic AMP causes um, depolarization of the cell occur and beta, uh, example is the P beta adrenergic receptor. Second is the GI type, it is the inhibitory type and it inhibits the adenylyl cyclase enzyme and decrease the cyclic AMP. And uh, example is alpha 2 adrenergic receptor in the smooth muscle can cause uh, depolarization occur. Third is the GQ type and it is uh, activate the phospholipase C enzyme and it increase the inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. So, inositol triphosphate can cause it, it uh, increase the calcium which activate the calcium, inositol triphosphate uh, activate the calcium and it uh, increase the uh, release of the from the uh, calmodium channel. So, uh, calcium can be third messenger and example is the muscarinic or M1 receptor. Beta and gamma subunit is the enzyme and uh, ion channel link. So, all GPCR receptor are having beta and gamma subunit. Now, transmembrane enzyme link receptor. Transmembrane enzyme link receptor have enzymatic activity in their intracellular portion. The enzyme is mainly tyrosine kinase and receptor tyrosine kinase for the insulin and epidermal growth factor. Now mechanism, mechanism of transmembrane enzyme link receptors are binding to the agonist to extracellular domain of the receptor. Example is the insulin. Dimerization, dimerization of the receptor stimulate intrinsic kinase activity in extracellular part of the receptor. Phosphorylation of the tyrosine residual on the receptor and other intracellular protein and activate intracellular signaling pathway and gene transcription occur and tissue response occur. Now here is the external domain of the receptor and this is internal domain of the receptor. Whenever agonist bind with external domain of receptor, it activate the internal domain and uh, bind with the check molecule which is present in the floating in the cytoplasm and uh, which uh, phosphorylate the tyrosine residual of the internal domain and uh, which to bind which bind to the state means the signal transducer and activator of transcription. Now phosphorylation of the tyrosine residual of the state and uh, now phosphorylated state dimerize and dissociate from the internal domain of the receptor and move toward the nucleus to transcript the gene. Now next or fourth type of the receptor is the nuclear receptor. So these are the intracellular receptor regulate the gene expression. Examples of the nuclear receptors are receptor for the vitamin A, vitamin D, sex steroids receptors, glucocorticoids receptors and receptor for the thyroid hormone. These all are nuclear receptor and it takes time for the action and action is prolonged after uh, uh, action is developed. So, uh, hormone enter into the cell of the target organ and bind with specific receptor in the cytoplasm and form the steroid receptor 
complex now steroid receptor complex become activated and enter into the nucleus and bind with the specific site of the dna and this regulate protein synthesis and response occur now regulation of the receptor there are two type of the regulation down regulation and up regulation when down regulation occur when prolonged use of agonist occur causes uh, decrease in number and sensitivity of the receptor so decrease the effect of the drug example is the chronic use of salbutamol causes down regulation of the beta adrenal receptor which may responsible for decrease effect of the salbutamol in asthma second one is the up regulation of the receptor on prolonged use of the antagonist example is the propranolol whenever used for the prolonged uh, duration then uh, in after prolonged use of the propranolol stoppage of the propranolol causes increased receptor number and sensitivity on certain stoppage of antagonist and causes some patient experience symptoms such as nervousness anxiety palpitation tachycardia rise in blood pressure and angina can occur or even myocardial infarction may precipitate so this is due to up regulation or super sensitivity of the beta adrenergic receptor of to the catecholamine now dose response relationship the pharmacological effect of the drug depend on the concentration of the site of action at the site of action which in turn is determined by the dose of the drug administered such a relationship is called dose response relationship now combined effect of the drug are a combination of two or more drug can result in increase or decrease in response of the drug so uh, whenever increase the response are called like additive effect the combined effect of two or more drug is equally to some of their individual effect like example is the effect of drug a plus b equal to effect of drug a plus effect of drug b example is the combination of ibuprofen and paracetamol as analgesic so uh, second effect is the drug potentiation or supra additive effect the enhancement of action of one drug by another drug is which is inactive is called potentiation effect of drug a plus drug b is more than effect of drug a and plus effect of drug b so example is levodopa and carbidopa and another example is acetylcholine and physostigmine when uh, carbidopa and physostigmine inhibit the breakdown of the levodopa and acetylcholine respectively thus enhance the effect of the another drug now third is the synergism when two or more drug are administered simult simultaneously their combined effect is greater than the uh, that elicited by either drug alone example is the sulfamethoxazole plus trimethoprim and pyrimethamine plus sulfadoxin these both drug singly they are uh, shorter acting when it combined with another drug it enhance the effect of the both <coughs> combination next is the antagonism what is antagonism it is the effect of drug is decrease or abolish the presence of another drug so first is the physical antagonism the opposing action of the two drug is due to their physical property example is adsorption of the alkaloid by activated charcoal used useful in the alkaloid poisoning now chemical antagonism is the opposing action of the two drug is due to their chemical properties example is the antacid or weak bases and they neutralize the gastric acid and used in the peptic ulcer chelating agent combined uh, complex like metal are useful in the heavy metal poisoning now physiological antagonism are uh, two drugs act at the different receptor or bind by different mechanism or uh, some physiological system and produce opposite action example is the insulin and glucagon both uh, on the sugar both having opposite action adrenaline and histamine both uh, uh, act on the bronchial a smooth muscle but histamine produces bronchoconstriction uh, and through via the histamine receptor whereas uh, adrenaline produces bronchodilatation by acting through the adrenaline receptor beta adrenergic receptor hence the adrenaline help to relieve the bronchospasm in anaphylactic 
reaction. Receptor antagonism is the antagonist bind with the same receptor as the agonist and inhibit the effect. It can be competitive or non-competitive type of antagonism. So competitive type of antagonism in, uh, is both agonist and antagonist bind with reversibly to the same site on the receptor. Example is the acetylcholine is agonist for the muscarinic receptor and atropine is the antagonist of the muscarinic receptor. Both bind with the muscarinic receptor. So atropine, if atropine is bind with muscarinic receptor, it is antagonized the effect of the acetylcholine. When on the opioid receptor, naloxone is the antagonist and morphine is agonist. So if whenever and naloxone bind with the receptor, then it inhibit the effect of the morphine. Now, atropine is used in organophosphorus poisoning to relieve the muscarinic symptom, whereas naloxone is used in morphine overdose. Now, equilibrium type of the competitive antagonist can be overcome by increase the concentration of the agonist. Now, non-equilibrium type of the antagonism, the antagonist bind to the same site on the receptor as agonist bind. Uh, binding is irreversible. The antagonist form strong covalent bond with the receptor. Phenoxybenzamine is used in pheochromocytoma in irreversible antagonism of adrenaline at alpha receptor. Non-competitive type of antagonist are bind to a different site on the receptor and prevent the agonist from in interacting with the receptor. In this type, antagonistic effect cannot be overcome by increasing the concentration of the agonist. Thank you very much for watching the video.